Hello and welcome. I already have here the painting out of the working frame and now I can advance for the cleaning and for the varnish removal. The holes are fixed and the painting is already relined. So in structural terms, the painting is stable. And I will use this mix of products to clean the face of the painting. This is a mix of several detergent agents, but also with some enzymes that will help to break the dirt that is over the varnish. This dirt is part of smoke, fireplace smoke, uh, cigarettes and nicotine smoke grease that sometimes is in the air and that did help to also dust and all another kind of dirt to go on the surface of the painting. It's important to remove this dirt first so I can access easily and better to the varnish. Some of you already know me, but for those who don't, my name is Eduardo and I make videos mainly about restoration of old paintings. But I also enjoy to make videos about other subjects related to fine arts, symbology, iconography, messages that are in the paintings, art exhibitions that I may visit. So check other videos in the channel and I hope you enjoy them. In the previous episode of this project, you watched me applying an adhesive in the back of the painting so I could apply the new linen. And actually, one of you, my dear viewers, did ask me if there was a problem if that adhesive do pass through the canvas, through the holes or any tears, and it stays on the front of the painting. Well. Actually, there is no problem because that adhesive, now when I do the cleaning of the painting and also when I remove the varnish, the cleaning agent and the solvent of the varnish will take off and remove any of that adhesive. Those paintings are signed here with this monogram MM and also with the date of 1908. So here I use a circular motion also, but very, very soft, because normally signatures in paintings can be easily erased. So I'm going to try to do this in a very soft way, so it doesn't damage. The signature. I already removed the grime of the paintings, so I can start removing the varnish because now my access to the varnish is much more easy. I prefer now to remove the varnish on the same color because I see that here. For example, there are some colors that are fugitive. So here in the grapes, there are places where the color is not so deep. It's interesting what's happening here. I would say that there are areas where the color is a little bit fugitive, but it can be that he also did apply a color, a very transparent color which means pigment that was diluted in a very high quantity of linseed oil, for example. So it makes a more transparent color, not so deep. And I'm going to start to remove the varnish. I already have here a mix of solvent that I did prepare. And I can notice already the varnish getting glued to the cotton and also I can see it.
this varnish is not so yellow but I can see perfectly when he's removed from the grapes and now that I already cleaned the painting and I did remove the varnish I can now start by applying the filling for those holes here, here and in several places here in the painting for that I do apply this filling to make this I normally use Belgium Champagne which is a special chalk that we do have here in Belgium and also I use some glue and some ethanol I can apply in this free way because after I will remove the excess There is a lot to be removed, as you can see, because there were a lot of tears and holes that needed to be filled with this material. I use my fingertips not only to fill when apparently the, the filling is in, in, at the same level, but I also, with this circular motion, I can remove part of, of the putty and using a cotton swab with some demineralized water it helps me also to remove the excess perfect now. And finally, after several hours, the excess of putty is removed. Everything is leveled. I can now stretch it again on its stretching frame. This is not exactly a stretching frame because as you see here, it doesn't have place to put the keys to stretch after. So it means that I do have to be very careful when it comes to stretch the painting because after I cannot adjust because if it doesn't stay well at the first, Time, I cannot stretch it with the keys and you probably ask me why I'm doing this well the frame is in good condition and I really try in my restoration process to keep the authenticity as much as possible so this is the frame that belongs to this painting since it was painted by the artist 
So since it's not with insects and it's not in bad condition, I really prefer to still use it to maintain as much as possible the integrity of the old painting. I'm going now to apply the varnish. I choose for this painting a resin that is a little bit more thick than normal that I made using a resin and for this specific painting I did increase a little bit of the concentration of that resin so that makes this varnish a little bit thicker so it will make a cover of the painting but will also give a more uniform surface to the painting so after i can apply the retouching over that varnish this varnish has two main actions which are uh, the saturation of the colors so it will make easier for me to achieve the closest color as possible to the original and also, of course, it will isolate my retouch from the original painting.
The application of this last varnish layer will not only protect the painting and my retouch, but will also give another life to this artwork. In the beginning of this project, this painting had several tears and holes, and it needed to have a new linen support. But after the restoration we get again, this painting full of vibrance and really beautiful. Thanks for watching and I think you would like to watch this video here.